I'm throwing a party soon, but my beer isn't cold yet, and I don't have any ice. I wonder if SolidWorks Flow Simulation can help me figure out how long to leave it in the freezer before it's ready to drink. We'll start by creating the project. I'm going to use the project wizard to make sure everything gets created correctly, give it a descriptive name so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. Set my units. Uh, as I go through this, this, I can set up that it's going to be an internal study and it's time dependent. Uh, I'm going to go back and set my time units to minutes, that way I don't have to try to sit there and convert in my head. And I'm also going to turn on thermal conductivity and gravity so we can get some free convection going on inside this system. The default fluid is air, but I'm also going to add water and ethanol, which is the main ingredients of beer, so that I can apply those inside the bottles. The main racks are all steel, so I'll just pick a mild steel as my default material and override the rest from there. Now the initial temperature is going to be cold because the freezer is cold. Anything that's warmer, I'll go ahead and, and, and uh, manually set that myself inside the study as a parameter. Now, to go ahead and make it a little easier to work, I'll hide my refrigerator box and just take a look at these various components. The fluid subdomains for the beer needs to be set as one of the faces inside that closed container. Choose the liquids that are going to be in there, including the percentages. This is 6% uh, alcohol by volume and set the initial temperature. These are room temperature, so we're going to set them at 75 degrees. And then all I need to do is go through and set the remaining faces on all the other bottles and cans so that any of those internal volumes is set. Just pick any face inside there and it'll define and recognize every face that touches that. They do need to be fully sealed though, so set up your geometry appropriately. The next thing we'll do is define the solid materials. Now, the aluminum cans and the glass bottles are not the default that I set, that's steel, but the bottle caps are steel, so I don't need to worry about those. Just get those other ones done, and then I'm going to set an initial solid temperature to all of those parts and pieces. That way it will come in as a hot can or a or room temperature bottle, uh, even though the global default is to be cold in the freezer. I'll use a time dependent or a timetable, and after a very short period of time, it's just going to turn off that room temperature control so it'll start to cool down naturally. The next thing we'll do is go ahead and insert a goal. Now, the goal can be used to monitor the progress of the solution as you go, but it's also helpful for making graphs uh, and information. And for steady state studies, it helps with convergence. Next thing we'll do is uh, define the air subdomain. Uh, we defined the fluid subdomain earlier, just need to make sure to go ahead and, and specify each enclosed space as a is being filled with fluid. Now we can apply some boundary conditions. Now everything is going to be allowed to change temperature over time, but we're assuming that the freezer is going to keep the walls at a constant temperature. So I'll pick all the internal walls of my box, of my freezer, so that as things warm up, that will maintain a constant uh, wall temperature. That's going to be basically the heat sink for this entire system. We'll take a look at the mesh. Uh, you may have to mesh it once just to see what it looks like. In this case, I know the bottle geometry is a little bit fine, so I'm going to turn up the small solid features refinement level up to about three. That'll give it the opportunity to split the mesh in those small areas and give me a much more accurate result. Next thing we're ready to do is go ahead and solve. Because this is a transient solution, it's going to take quite a bit of time, so I'm going to employ a couple of calculation control options to speed it up. One of those is flow freezing, where we're going to take and consider that at certain times the, the pressure and the velocity really aren't changing enough, so we're only going to solve the thermal study. It really speeds up the model and the solution. With the solution complete, the, one of the result plots time steps will be loaded, and we can start to process those results. We can do a cut plot of the fluid flow field, perhaps do a surface plot. That's going to help us to correlate the data from our surface temperature or surface thermometer um, and actually take some probe value data just to get some real hard numbers. In another video, we cover the actual calibration of the setup of the study to make sure the results real, uh, match up with the real world values that we measure. I mentioned earlier that goals make it easier for you to plot temperature values as you go. You can see the value of the temperature going down and you can find on that plot at the point at which it becomes drinkable. I'm also going to create a time-lapse video that shows the surface temperature along with those probes that give me actual data points 
over the time period that I've chosen. Uh, running through this nice animation wizard makes it easy to create that wizard or that value, and I can choose which plots I want to be visible uh, in that time lapse video. And you can see the finished result there at the bottom right. That's the finished animation. I think at this point, the only thing left to do is go drink some beer. If you'd like this model, this assembly, to see what it looks like or to compare your model with it, or if you have any questions about setting up your own model, uh, maybe you're going to cool down some whiskey in the freezer, uh, feel free to drop me a line. I'm happy to help you. Thank you for watching.